last video, we talked about how time is often a third variable that is actually causing the two things that are correlated. It's not that they're causing each other, but actually the time is causing both of them to change. Uh, so there's another way that time can cause people to think that one thing is causally related to another. This is also related to time, and it's called post hoc ergo propter hoc, which means after the thing, therefore, because of it. So often when some people see something consistently, see something happen after another, they think that the thing that happened first caused the second thing. And often, sometimes, that's true, but not necessarily. We tend to jump to that conclusion too often. So he often, uh, when especially in Sydney in January and February, um, you might have seen some lightning. And then very soon after the lightning, you might hear some thunder. And in fact, thunder off always does occur after lightning not before, and that's because they are causally related. So the post hoc ergo propter hoc here is not a fallacy, it's not a mistake. It is the case that when you get this huge electrical discharge, it causes a sonic boom, and thus, because of the slower speed of sound, you then hear thunder a bit later. So the lightning does cause the thunder sound. But it's not always the case that when something happens after another, it's because it was caused by the previous thing. Other things that are changing with time that might have caused both. Uh, so unfortunately though, people often jump to this explanation that the thing that happened before could cause the thing after. For example, you'll hear people, there's been celebrities who have said things like, my child received a routine MMR vaccine and then a year or so later or less, developed autism. And then all of those very concerned mothers, some of them, sorry, very few of them, but some of them will then say that the MMR shot gave my child autism, that the vaccination causes autism. Uh, but really, almost all children get that vaccination and very few of them subsequently develop autism. So it can't be so simple as that the shot always causes autism. And in fact, just that, that there's a few people who get autism after the shot doesn't mean much because almost all children are getting that shot. Um, if we want to know about causation, we really want to compare those who get the shot and those who don't get the shot. And that's not in this, uh, these sentences here at all. So this is a case where people have jumped to a causal explanation too quickly. Another person might say, I ate chili fries in March and had stomach cancer in July. The chili fries probably caused my stomach cancer. So when something bad happens to people, they look for something to blame. And of course they look to the past uh, for the cause and then they jump on something. But we know that um, things like cancer uh, have many causes, and so you would really have to look at a lot of cases to figure out whether chili fries could cause it. It's ridiculous to jump to concluding that chili fries caused your cancer based on one observation. But the tendency to say post hoc ergo propter hoc is so strong in people's minds that they sometimes do that based on just one observation. Uh, someone might say, we prayed for a Mercedes and then we got one. Prayer works. Or they might say, I wore this particular shirt at that last game, uh, the last two games that, that, that I won. Uh, that's my lucky shirt. And so I always have to wear that shirt. They're really deciding a causal relationship based on only a couple data points. And as we've seen from looking at scatter plots and calculating R and calculating p-value, um, if you even want to say that it's like really correlated, you need more than just like one or two data points. And here they're jumping not only to saying there's a correlation based on the data points, just a couple data points, they're jumping to saying there's a causal relationship from a correlation that might not even be a correlation because it's based on such little data. This is my favorite one. Uh, in this cartoon, one person says, I used to think correlation implied causation. 
Then I took a statistics class. Now I don't. I think correlation implies causation. Then the girl here says, sounds like the class helped. You understand the correlation does not imply causation. And then he says, well, maybe. So the idea here is the girl is taking from the report that first there was um, thinking that correlation implied causation, uh, and then there was the statistics class. And so with the statistics class, after the statistics class, the person didn't think correlation implied causation. So the girl is jumping to the conclusion that taking the statistics class causes the thing after of not believing that correlation implied causation. But because this person took a statistics class, the, the, the presumed guy here, he knows that he shouldn't jump to that conclusion based on so few data points. Maybe there's something else that made him realize the correlation does not imply causation. We can't conclude it just from what he told uh, this girl here, that one happened after the other. Now, that's a funny thing here. It's a silly cartoon because um, we actually have independent reasons for thinking that statistics classes are going to address your misunderstandings of things like this. So if, it's, if we think that um, most people think correlation implies causation, and we also know that this class often they do teach that it doesn't, then that is a pretty likely explanation here. But the point is you'd have to bring in this other information that you know about statistics classes in order to conclude that. You can't conclude it just because one thing happened after the other. You have to know something about those things to know that it's very plausible that there was a causal relationship here. So the causal model they posited is the statistics class leads to learning about correlation and causation. But instead of that x causing y causal model, um, we should also be thinking about the possibility of a third factor here, time, leading, so it's not post hoc ergo propter hoc, um, but rather it's time that's causing both of those things. So time causing classes to be completed as you go through the years of university, you'll take multiple classes. So of course classes will be completed. And as you get older, you learn things from lots of places, not just classes. So it might not be that the classes caused the learning that correlation does not imply causation. Um, but unfortunately, this is a strong enough thing that people do that um, people can even potentially win elections based on capitalizing on people's lack of information and understanding of this. So, for example, uh, President Trump got elected, and then in, in the U.S. economy, unemployment went down. So should we, maybe we should re-elect Trump. And you'll see that a lot on um, you know, Republican sort of websites and pundits. And so the implication here is that Trump is actually reduces unemployment. Something that Trump is doing is actually causing unemployment to reduce. So Trump causes reduction in unemployment. Um, but you should now understand that whenever someone says, points out something that happened after another, you should think about whether time could be causing both of those things. And in fact, even before Trump got elected, uh, long before he was elected, the economy was steadily improving and unemployment was steadily going down. So it's not clear. So that's a case where time was causing something and something else might have caused Trump to be elected, something related to time. But Trump being elected might not be the reason the economy continued improving. It was maybe would have continued improving anyway. But because voters are so have such little information about economics and also make these sorts of fallacies, that may may be enough to get Trump reelected because people just want to know about the economy.